subscribe and click on the bell. The second part will be released on Sunday evening. Probably, many adults had questions about some of the nuances that occur in fairy tales. Why was Little Red Riding Hood walking alone in the forest? Why did Cinderella's father ignore the plight of his daughter? And the Sleeping Beauty was searched for so long. But these oddities and inconsistencies are a mere trifle compared to their original version. Many works of folklore, which are read to children as classic fairy tales, were not children's works at all. Or every adult, through whose mouth the narrative passed, added their own details, catching up with horror on an already strange plot. The main storytellers, the brothers Grimm and Charles Perrault, have similar plots from time to time, because they took folklore works as the basis of their creativity and modified them somewhat. Adapting them for the general public, the brothers' works are traditionally considered tougher and more complex than Perrault's works. Although many things will seem wild to contemporaries, both Perrault and the brothers Grimm. In the original version of the fairy tale about a girl in a red headdress and a hungry wolf, the first one wears a chaperone. This is such a cape with a hood, by the way. The chaperone is quite often preserved in the illustrations. The brothers Grimm dressed up the girl in a hat, although in summer it would be more logical to walk through the woods in a cape than in a hat. But that's not the point, it wasn't the main change at all. The story of the relationship between a wolf and a girl in Europe was read all to each other back in the 14th century, although there were no chilling details in it. If in the modern version of the fairy tale the wolf carefully eats the grandmother without leaving a single scratch on her from the fangs, then in the original version he cooks a rich soup from his prey. Then Little Red Riding Hood comes, there's a wolf in his grandmother's hat, invites his granddaughter to the table, they say, she just cooked. Grandma's cat tries to warn his granddaughter not to eat the treat, but the fake grandmother throws a wooden shoe at him, so accurately that she accidentally knocks the animal off its feet. However, this circumstance of the massacre of a beloved pet does not bother the girl in any way, and she has a big lunch and the girl undresses and goes to bed, where a wolf is waiting for her. And that's it, no woodcutters and why would they do that if grandma had already been let into the soup? The finale remains open, so what happens in the future between the heroes of the fairy tale? Everyone decides to the best of their depravity. The happy ending with the woodcutters and the rescue of the grandmother was composed by Charles Perrault, who however, in order not to reduce the degree of the educational moment, added, they say. This is a moral for those whom strangers invite to their bed. The German folk tale Gretel and Hansel even in modern interpretation has a somewhat ambiguous intonation, based on which even horror films are filmed. But his original version was not at all for the faint of heart. Its plot originates in the 14th century, just during the Great Famine of 1315 to 1317. At that time, three years of frost in a row destroyed the entire crop, which killed almost a quarter of the population, cannibalism was widespread. That's when the story of Gretel and Hansel appeared. So, the initial version assumes that parents, driven to despair by hunger, are going not just to get rid of extra mouths, but also to eat them. By chance, the children overhear this conversation and run away into the forest to escape. However, their plan was also very cruel. They were going to sit there until their parents starved to death, so they periodically returned to the house to find out if it was time to return. So, one day the brother and sister again eavesdrop on the conversation of the elders, that they managed to get some bread, but the meat gravy slipped out of their hands. The children, having stolen a piece of bread, return to their shelter, but for some reason mark the road with breadcrumbs, they are immediately eaten by birds. It seemed that the guys didn't have much left, but then a house made entirely of bread meets on their way. They pounce on him and eat their fill. After that, the guys decide to return home, taking with them bread and a witch, which they pre-fried in their own oven. Parents no longer need to feed their children, there is enough bread, and everyone is happy. After the famine was in the past, the fairy tale also changed, so the parents allegedly just took the children to the forest, and were not going to eat them. And the house became gingerbread, apparently, because the children were no longer tempted by ordinary bread, the witch was also no longer dragged home with her, she remained there in the oven. 
But despite this change, there are still a lot of questions about the plot and what will happen after the food that the children brought with them runs out. Have the children forgiven their parents for this behavior? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was preserved thanks to folk storyteller Dorothy Weeman. Then the Brothers Grimm recorded it, as usual, in a more censored version, although it also seems wild too. The modern reader, what can we say about the original version? The queen planned to eat Snow White, and clearly not from hunger, she planned it, but from anger and cruelty. She ordered a servant to bring her lungs and heart. He, as in the modern version, is seduced by the youth and beauty of the princess, goes to deceive, and leaves the girl alive. The heart and lungs of the deer are attributed to the queen. She immediately arranges a dinner party, using these giblets and dishes. By a traditional coincidence, the girl finds herself in the house of seven dwarfs, who leave her at home, fascinated by her beauty, and not by her culinary skills and housekeeping. The queen finds out that Snow White is alive, turns into an old woman, and poisons her with an apple. The girl falls into a lethargic sleep, and her body is placed in a crystal coffin and lifted to the top of the mountain. It is there that the king's son, passing by, finds her. As usual, he also really likes Snow White, even if she does not show any signs of life. In the original version, he begins to persuade the dwarves to give him the body. Moreover, he offers them untold riches, but they do not agree. The story is silent about why the young man needed the lifeless body of a young beauty, apparently giving scope to adult fantasy. While the prince was trying to bargain with the dwarves, the servants unsuccessfully drop the coffin. A piece of apple flies out of the princess's throat, which she chokes on, and she comes to life. Then there is a wedding and a happy ending, in which the queen dances at the event, although before that she was put on iron shoes, preheating them on fire, sleeping beauty. The plot is very similar to Snow White, but there is an even earlier version, before Charles Perrault. John Batista Basel managed to record a slightly more folk version, and there is not much romantic beginning in it. According to him, the girl in the coffin was found not by a young prince, but by a fully grown king, yes, and married. And he did not kiss her at all, but took advantage of the girl's defenselessness so much that nine months after their meeting, she gave birth to twins a boy and a girl. So, one of the babies mistakenly started sucking her finger and pulled out a splinter in this version. The princess fell asleep, pricked by a spindle. The beauty does not have time to get upset because she was abandoned to the mercy of fate, and even with children who came from nowhere, as the king arrives. No, the crown person did not come to visit his offspring at all. He just remembered that he had once had fun here and decided to return. After learning about the children, he began to come and take care of them regularly. But then the legitimate wife of the king intervened, she gave the children to the cook to cook dinner, and ordered the beauty herself to be burned. But if not for her greed, the plan might have succeeded, but the queen ordered to remove the gold embroidered dress from the beauty chain to the pillar. The king, again seduced by the beauty of a naked girl, decided to switch places with his wife, so the queen was burned at the stake, and beauty took her place on the throne. Oh yes, the cook saved the children, the plot outlined by the Brothers Grimm, although called Raw Puzzle, has many discrepancies with the modern cartoon. The couple lived next to a huge garden in which many different vegetables, herbs and shrubs grew. So, the wife once wanted Raw Puzzle a plant of the Bell family, the husband, to please his wife, secretly climbed into this garden. But one day it seemed not enough, because the man was sent for more, but this time he was caught by a neighbor who turned out to be a witch. In exchange for his freedom, she made him promise to give him his future daughter. The man, who also had no daughter in his plans, agreed to such a deal. However, the witch did not forget about the agreement and took the newborn girl to herself, naming her Rapuzel. So the girl lived in captivity in a huge tower, until the prince came here, he met the girl and began to come regularly when the witch was not at home. So Rapuzel got pregnant and could no longer lift the witch by the hair into the tower as quickly as before. The latter did not like it at all, and she cut off her hair and kicked her out. The hair, meanwhile, remained with the witch. She lowered it from the tower and waited. Very soon the prince came and went up to the tower, where he found a witch instead of his beloved. The witch scolded the prince and pushed him down from the tower. He fell right into the bushes, the thorns of which poked out his eyes. 
he could not return back to his kingdom and began to wander the world a blind cripple. So, he met his beloved, who had already given birth to twins. She was so happy to meet them that her tears of happiness that fell on the prince's eye sockets returned his sight. Despite the fact that the story about the girl Mesha, who lived with bears, is perceived as exclusively Russian, in fact it is not. This is a Scottish fairy tale that can be found in books on English folklore. It owes its popularity in Russia to Leo Tolstoy, who translated it and adapted it for the domestic reader. In the original folklore version, there were no girls at all. There was a fox, or rather, an old cunning fox who snuck into the den of the bears and ate their supplies. The owners, who have returned inopportunely, find him in his house. He rushes away, but they overtake him. And the story ends with the fact that the youngest bear cub liked to warm his paws in fox skin. Robert Southey, who published a slightly different version of the folktale back in the 19th century, turned the fox into an old lady. But the ending of the fairy tale remains vague. The old woman, fleeing from the bears, jumps out of the window, and her fate is unknown. The author argues on this topic. They say, it isn't clear whether she broke her neck in a fall, or was able to get out of the woods, or whether the guards grabbed her and, mistaking her for a tramp, sent her to a correctional institution. But she didn't come to the bears anymore. But Lev Nikolaevich adapted the fairy tale in a Russian way, leaving no morality in it, according to which, it is not worth washing bowls in other people's houses. The girl will not only get away with it, but will also be able to punish the bears. The story of the modest, patient, and hard-working Cinderella girl is actually so ancient that echoes of it can be found in the Egyptian and Greek epics. A beautiful Greek woman was abducted by human traffickers and sold to a cruel and terrible old man. He gave the beauty shoes made of gold, but the falcon stole one of them and took it to Pharaoh. The ruler ordered to find the mistress of the slipper and fell in love with her. The material of the shoes in different versions was also different, precious metals and fabrics, furs, rare stones. Until eventually, as a result of the final processing of the text, the shoes became crystal. Fairy tales about Bluebeard, a loving gentleman, are not so popular and well known. Although in fact it is a luxury, and the previous seven wives, who disappeared without a trace, should make the next bride tense up. But she calmly walks down the aisle with a sensualist, and only her brothers save another curious little wife from death. And what famous children's fairy tales seem to you, completely unsuitable for children and why?